What if the Renault F1 car had a Renault Clio engine? Well, this is one of the more wacky mods I've done then on F1 2020, and I've done a few of them. We are going to simulate what it would be like for the Renault F1 car to have a Renault Clio engine. To be precise, it's the 2020 Renault Clio TCE 130, about 130 brake horsepower, about 96 kilowatts, produces that around about 5,000 RPM. So that's going to be the absolute peak of our power. It's going to be 5,000 RPM. An F1 car, to put into comparison, normally idles at about 4,000 RPM. So a little bit different there. So it's got about a 6,500 uh, rev limiter, which again, we have simulated. So basically what I've done is I've gone into the files and I've simulated everything. So you can see here in front of you, the rev limiter is around, well, sorry, the red idler is just under 1,000, which is probably realistic. You can see here, there's sort of the inertia of the engine and also how slowly it uh, sort of goes back down to zero revs. Obviously, uh, an F1 engine is very, very different in many, many ways to a Renault Clio engine. So uh, just showing you a bit of kind of B-roll here just so you can see uh, sort of what it's going to be like really. And the only thing really I haven't changed is the sounds. I mean, obviously the game doesn't have a Renault Clio engine sound. So I've only really simulated the the kind of parameters, the variables there. So the, the power is right. The power is exactly right. The, the sort of power curve is sort of roughly right. The gear ratio is a lot shorter to match. We've obviously also removed the uh, energy recovery system, removed the turbo. Um, all that sort of stuff, but we've actually left the weight the same because, you know, this is fundamentally guesswork by me, but a Renault Clio engine is going to be a hell of a lot heavier than a Renault F1 engine, obviously, even with all the hybrid and stuff that the modern one's got, it's going to be heavier, there's more going on, it's just going to be a much cheaper, heavier engine, it's just made of much more expensive or much lighter and much uh, cheaper materials, the Renault Clio engine, of course. So I've actually left the weight the same, um, we've just changed all the kind of figures to make it, you know, sort of have the same power and, and handle roughly the same as a Renault Clio engine, but anyway, without further ado then, let's get straight into a race with this Renault F1 car with a Renault Clio engine. I will say we've given all the rest of the cars a Renault Clio engine because, you know, if we were the only one with a Renault Clio engine, it wouldn't be a very fun race. So uh, anyway, let's get into it. Here we go then on the grid. Again, the engine sounds are not any different. They are effectively the same as the V6 F1 engine has got. Having a really good start here. For some reason, they are getting really rubbish start. Up through the gears really quickly. Already into fifth gear at 90 kilometers an hour. Six, sixth gear at 100 kilometers an hour. Trying to get a little bit of slipstream there. Don't know if that's effective at all at this speed, but we've gone for it anyway. And uh, just then coming up to Alex Albon up ahead, up into eighth gear at 140 kilometers an hour. Uh, it seems to peak out around about 100 miles an hour, about 160 kilometers an hour. That's sort of roughly what it peaks out as. Obviously, I've got no idea if that would be realistic. I've just put the numbers in the game. I made the engine have the same power as it does in real life. The Renault Clio engine does have in real life. Um, and obviously, the game has its set drag levels and friction of the wheels and all those kind of things that would go into that sort of thing. So, sounds about right to me there. About 100 miles an hour in, in, in British money. Um, I reckon that'd be about right. I mean, an F1 car is going to have a hell of a lot more drag than a uh, Renault Clio car. It is, of course, a lot lighter than a Renault Clio car would be. Um, but I would say 100 miles an hour, you know, if you put your hand out the window at 100 miles an hour, you do get quite a lot of wind resistance on your hand. So when you're in a very draggy F1 car, it's probably about right. Maybe it'd be able to go a little bit faster. And we have also found a few little quirks with the physics engine, which I'll get into a little bit later in this video when we do discover them. We're up to P10 already then. Just trying to get some slipstream from the cars ahead. And... It's interesting here because at this sort of speed you can see some quirks with how this game works. Of course the AI handling, the AI sort of battling really, you get some, some good idea of how they really do battle at a top speed. Of course, you know, to be honest it doesn't really reveal, reveal too much about the AI. That, you know, they, they largely are the same. You can sort of, once you play this game enough, you kind of get a hang of the sort of quirks of the AI. Like there, look, I touch the back of a stab so we kind of swerve to try and avoid the contact, which is what it's doing now. We're getting a little bump draft here to try and sneak past this Carlos signs. So we're going to try and dive inside here, but no... Ascari is completely flat, unsurprisingly. And uh, coming to the exit of Ascari now, as cars ahead are pretty slow. Looks like one of the Mercedes actually managed to break clear of the pack, interestingly. They're pretty slow on the exit, so we're trying on the outside, but of course everyone is going to reach VMAX very, very quickly. 100, about 155 kilometers an hour, looks like it is VMAX down this particular straight. I don't know if it's a completely flat straight or not. But anyway, a bit of a hit on Bottas there to try and get him ahead of Giovinazzi. It doesn't quite work. Bottas still going to dive inside of Daniel Kvyat now. Is it called a dive at this speed? We'll call it a dive when there's, there's, there's no brakes and we're doing 106 kilometers an hour. This is one of the quirks of the physics. Look at this, we're picking up speed hugely. Look at this, Bottas on the inside not picking up speed. We're picking up a huge amount of speed, almost up to 180 kilometers an hour, which is quite significantly faster than our normal VMAX. I've not worked out what it is. Some of the corners seem to give you a bit of a boost. That one gives you a boost when you're on the racing line uh, on the exit of that corner. So I don't know if it's maybe because it's a bit better rubbered in, maybe the, the track provides less friction on that particular exit. 
Uh, so you just naturally pick up speed. I'm not too sure what it is, but if you're on the inside, like we saw Bottas was, you don't pick up the speed. And also, you saw me doing a little bit of it there. I start to figure out just about now, as <laughs> we dive on the inside, this is one of the few braking zones. There's only two braking zones in the whole of Monza with a Renault Clio engine. But uh, yeah, so I just figured this out now that actually, for some reason, this is obviously a quirk with the physics in the game, not a realistic thing. When we swerve, we seem to pick up speed. I, I can't work out what this will be. Um... The game does simulate quite a lot of things. You know, you get more drag the, the faster you get and uh, all those sort of things. So, you know, it does simulate quite a lot. Uh, you know, for example, isn't another bit that the game uh, uh, simulates is that the higher in the revs you get, the greater friction you get from the engine, which, again, realistic. So, you know, this game does simulate quite a lot of things. I know people like to say it's not a sim. It does simulate quite a lot of things. It's obviously not perfect. There is better sims out there. It's not supposed to be a sim. Anyway, back to the point. So obviously swerving like this shouldn't uh, improve it, but this, it's still quite realistic in a lot of ways. So it does surprise me that this is a thing. I suspect it's a little quirk in the physics. There, there's something in there, perhaps, I don't know, to do with the camber or to do with the diff. It'll, it'll be something like that, a weird little quirk that for some reason we go faster. Now, before you esports guys jump on this and immediately start swerving everywhere, I've tried this at full speed. It does nothing. We're bump drafting Ocon here and we are now going to skip through the next sort of uh, lap or so as we bump draft him. But it, it, um, it doesn't actually work at full speed. If you're at full speed, there's enough drag, I guess, enough friction when you, when you do these swerves that actually it doesn't help. It, it, you slow down. When, when you do these swerves at full speed, uh, you know, with a normal F1 engine, you slow down. You, you go slower. So it's not the end of the world. Obviously, this is why it's not been picked up in their testing because it's a thing. But, you know, this I've not changed the physics of the game anyway. All I've done is remap the engine. That's all I've done. I've, ch I've changed the way the engine works. So this does apply to the physics of the normal game, interestingly. But um, yeah, obviously, because you're going slower uh, or faster, rather, you know, th there's, there's some other physics that end up overriding it. But maybe that's something that the Codemasters could look into and see if they could fix. Because clearly there's, you know, obviously a sim, all these sort of underlying issues, that's the ones you want to fix to make it as realistic as possible, to get it as close to a simulation as possible. But anyway, we've managed to catch Lewis Hamilton there with it. A lot of bump draft on S1. We're going to do a bit more of that because I quite want to run out one too. Interestingly, Ocon qualified, I think he qualified third or fourth. I didn't pick it up on the start of this video. He qualified third or fourth for some reason. Um, it seemed to be a leveller as well around Monza because, of course, everyone was just flat around most of the lap. Um, but, yeah, for some reason, Ocon is just significantly faster. So I don't know if in this game, perhaps the Renault is actually quite a good engine, just a uh, good car, rather, just got a bit of a rubbish engine. Uh, perhaps it's not. Got, perhaps it's quite good on drag. It's got quite low drag. I'm not too sure. But I actually got the idea for this video as well, I should say, from Spa when Renault ran such low wings. I initially was going to do a, a very low drag video. Um, subscribe if you want to see that and do like the video. But uh, I, I decided against that because I have done it. I have done it previously on a previous game. So I thought, well, I don't want to copy too many ideas. So I thought, I know what? Let's put a Renault Clio engine in a Renault F1 car. God knows what happens in my head when I come to these ideas. I mean, I don't know. But please do subscribe if you do. To be honest, this mod did take me a little bit of time. It probably took me about genuinely two to three hours to do this mod. There's lots and lots of variables involved to get all the power curve right and. I was having, you know, I had to disable anti-stall because anti-stall was kicking in because the game was thinking, well, you're on two low revs. Then, of course, I had to apply the mod to all the other cars. It does take time to do these mods, so please do subscribe if you are not already. It does really help a channel of my size to have a nice lot of subscribers. Uh, but anyway, come to the end of this race now. We are going to do one little race after this. Don't worry, though. That race will be uh, completely sped up. And on that race, I'm going to do the whole race. I'm going to have a... Uh, I'm going to do the swerving the whole race just to see how much different it would be. So we obviously gained a lot of the start there, but by the end of that five lap race, we were in the lead. And this is what it's done then. And interestingly, we haven't got the fast lap of the race because, again, the simulation of uh, this game, when you kind of speed up time in qualifying or when you finish a race early, it kind of simulates the rest. It doesn't realistically run it. So actually, the further down the field you are, as in the more simulated each car was, the faster they went on that last lap because the simulation isn't great. But anyway, 2 minutes 14.4 was our best lap on that. And actually, interestingly, we did swerve for most of that last lap. We're now going to do another race and see what we can get on this time. So the only difference here is we're not going to overtake anyone on the, on the first uh, corner. So we're going to wait till now before we can start overtaking. Much better exit in the cars ahead. Again, using our swerving every single millisecond. We're going to do no bump drafting. And we're going to use our swerving for every single millisecond in this race. So you go on the outside of a Haas there, up the inside. No, couldn't quite make that stick. And uh, again, trying to go up the inside here. Nice and flat through uh, Lesbo 1, Lesbo 2. Nice and flat. Again, three wide there. Coming down the back straight. Just about managed to squeeze past with a bit of swerving. And you see it is significantly faster. Look, we're gaining on the cars ahead. And, uh, you know, it's weird because obviously we're driving further. You know, this should be provide more resistance and it should mean that we're driving further. So it should definitely be slower, but it's not. But anyway, I've covered the, the quirks enough. Already up to, well, P6 actually as we cross the line at the end of lap one. 
Going to be up to P4, I suspect, by the end of the straight, which we are indeed. And uh, coming to lap two, she's got a bit of a gap to make up now, but shouldn't be too much an issue. We'll see what sort of lap time we get as well. Last race, we got two minutes 14.4, so let's see if we swerve a bit more aggressively. Uh, I have played with it as well. If, if you just turn the wheel a little bit, it doesn't seem to help you. You actually have to swerve. So I don't know, let me know down in the comments what you think this could possibly be that makes this faster. It's, I, I do think it'll be a, a diff thing or, or a, yeah, a, a, perhaps a camber thing. It, it'll be something really weird like that. It won't just be... You know, something obvious like the engine likes being rattled around. It won't be something like that because this game does do a good job of simulating the basics. But anyway, as we come to the end of this lap then, let's see what our lap time is going to be. See me doing a bit more swerving up to 170 on the exit of that corner. Thanks to that little boost. We get 13.6. We managed to go about eight tenths quicker on that lap there. We're doing lots of swerving. And anyway, guys, that brings us to the end of this video. We are going to have a little bit of fun with Bottas behind. We're going to have fun with everyone. We got a bit bored, to be honest. It's quite a slow race. So we thought, let's just play with these guys and see if we can close the field up a little bit and just smash into all of them. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.